Okay, so we're going to use for the background with this painting. So I, what I did with this painting is I primed the canvas in burnt umber. And I didn't put too much water with the burnt umber with a wide, big brush. I just went, um, mixed burnt umber with a bit of water. And then I just went over in different directions, traced the image and... Um, we're going to start working on the background. So with this image, actually I should put that. What we're going to do today, we're going to work on everything behind her, all of the colors, and we're going to put the color for the uh, water in front of her. So we'll start with the background. For this, we're going to use uh, sap green, very simple, keep it very simple. We need a very dark, dark background, so sap green and black or paints gray. If you use paints gray, you're gonna keep in mind that paints gray has a bit of blue in it, so that's why I'm using uh, ivory black, which has blue in it as well, but it's less than um, paints gray. So, ivory black, sap green and a brush that is let's see this one it's a good one okay hold on it's just a medium size anyway this is a very old brush i don't know what size is this brush but medium size not too big i mean this is a wide one very wide uh this is too much um this anything that you could control this is this is a good one that's number 20 but this is with american painter so any um any brush, flat brush, or um, a brush that you could spread your color with. So I'm going to use this one. Wet my color, that's sap green, some black, and that will make my sap green dark. It will dark, it will be, it will look darker once we start painting. So let's do this. Just put a layer. You might need another another layer with this. One layer might not be enough, especially if the paint is not thick. Um especially if as well you're working on white oh sorry you just go over the whole thing it will dry darker let's do this this is going to be a bush in here Let's do all of this. Even if you go over your uh, colors, if you're working with white, you have a white transfer, white pencil, you will still see the, you will still see the cut, the pencil drawing in the back. You'll see a hint. This is just, it's it, it, this, this layer, it's like we're actually um, putting, putting uh, one color over the whole canvas, except where she is. Anything background is done with this color. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to go over this. It's like priming your canvas. 
This creates depth. That's why we're doing this. We're going dark. It, we need depth. And you're going over the outline of the tree as well, right? Yeah. I... Yeah. Everything. Yeah. You can still see, you can still okay. see the line a bit, even if you see a bit of it. Even if you don't, it doesn't matter because then you could just gauge where the trees are or the line where the tree is uh, once you start painting. And we're going into the water and everything. Yeah. All thing. We could have easily think you're thinking probably why are we doing this? Why didn't we just prime it in dark green? Because she's not gonna be in dark green. Like she's as a background, not everything's gonna be dark green. So this if you prime her as well where her face and her clothes and her where she is or where the uh, the the stones are it's not dark green it will affect the colors that we we're going to put on top so if i'm putting a let's say pink over that it, it, it's going to affect the color pink it'll be this dark green is going to change the pink so that's why i prefer to use as background a color like burnt umber um, because it doesn't uh, it doesn't affect the colors on top whatever you put on top I'm always thinking when I'm priming a canvas, what's going to be on top of that prime color. So most of the time I use burnt umber. Okay. Almost like negative painting. Yes, it is. It is actually. Yes. All right. That's good enough. Perfect. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is uh, actually fill the color between. Let's take a round, small brush and just kind of fill this color around her. Okay, I'm going to pause. Okay, so for this layer now, we're going to do what we did first is we did a, a, added another layer in the center here, mostly. This is where uh, the deepest part is going to be. Um, now, I have cadmium yellow light and ultramarine violet. So if you mix, if we take Let's say take um, take sap green mm -hmm. and yellow, cadmium yellow light, and see how how light this color is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if I take ultramarine violet, put it here, it's gonna kind of mute and darken my color into more of a grayish green. It just kind of kind of make it subdued and it's not it's more like an olive green so it's more earthy so this color now what we're going to do is i have a a 
a brush a bright or this is a bright color a bright brush bright meaning like um it's like a flat but the the uh the brush part is bristle is shorter i'm going to take this color oh, or this yeah this color and with the corner of my brush let's bring this down what i'm going to do is with the corner of the brush i'm going to go this is going to dry darker okay so you want to do this, but at the same time, you don't want to lose your dark. So don't cover it completely because you're going to see a little bit of darks in there from the background. And it, it, don't make it look like leaves. It doesn't, it's not like this. That's not what we're doing. We're doing general. This is supposed to be far away and it's supposed to be kind of hazy not you know like you know there's there are trees there but we don't know what kind of tree it doesn't matter all we want is suggestion of trees in the back and this is the first furthest one back so when it's far away you don't see detail again i'm gonna load the brush with the corner of my brush I'm going to go in different directions, kind of dabbing and dabbing and, and I dab and I kind of sometimes drag and change direction because if you dab in the same direction, your brush stroke is going to show. Now, right above her umbrella, I'm going to leave a bit of that dark in between. Just a bit. So I'm not going to fill the whole thing. I'm just leaving a, a kind of a narrow corridor in there. Mm -hmm. Let's go down. Leal, is that a, a bright brush or like square? Bright, bright, square. Like a... See? And how wide is that? That says number four. It's not too wide. You know, if you if I put it next, and if you're using the same kind of uh, size I'm using as far as canvas, mm -hmm. um, you know, if let's say if I put it here, you can see from here underneath the the umbrella, one, two, almost like a three of the umbrella here. So one one third. It's right there. Okay. Yeah. Right there. Now, very, very gentle. It's like you're using a, actually, if you, it's like you're using a, a feather. It's a feather. Feather. Don't, don't push too hard. And so if I add a bit of more water to my paint, it's going to dry darker, which is perfect. There's another layer coming over this one, a little bit more highlights. Now, on the, on the left side, I'm going to cover a little bit more. So I'm not going to leave too much of that dark in between. I'm going to cover a little bit more. And why I'm doing this, why I'm, why I'm not doing the same like the uh, right-hand side, because I want variety I don't want the whole thing to look the same and I'm actually following what I'm seeing so right behind her you can see the foliage is really dense in there and that's good because when I am going to paint her face um, it's there's nothing interfering if you have too many patches in there where her face is it's going to look uh, it's gonna interfere with the shape of the face. But because we want her face to look really nice, I want whatever is behind her face to be smooth. So 
smooth and dark because then her face would pop if the background is dark. Okay. Let's, let's continue this one here. I'm going to add a little bit more water in there because I want it to be more fuzzy. I don't want it to look too... Um, defined. I'm still using the corner of my brush. More water you add, the easier you can spread, and and it will you can spread the paint, and it will look um, um, kind of flatter, which is good because there's a tree coming on in front of that eventually. So I'm just preparing the background here and just drag a bit of that color down. Not much, just, just a bit. Don't lose the darks in here, we need them. Because to make this look interesting and to make this look, to make this pop, I need the dark behind it. All right, let's go back. here wet your paint uh, wet your oh, sorry not wet oh geez um, um, wipe your brush a bit when you load it with a uh, tissue You know, in the reference, you can see that those ones in the back are fuzzy. They're not defined. So this is what we're trying to do now. It's a great, um, very nice reference. Another layer is coming. This is the first layer. And from time to time, stop and watch what you're doing, what you're creating, what, what shape you're getting. Because sometimes we get carried away. We're doing layers, we're layering. Don't forget to turn your brush around from time to time so you don't get the same brush stroke in the same direction all the time. Perfect. Okay, a little bit down here because I can see where the um, tree is, the trunk, tree trunk. There's like a bush. So we're going to put that bush in here and it goes down to the water. Just kind of and just kind of put some green here and there because there are other stuff in there. There's like stones and rocks and Okay, good. Let's do a bit of that reflection. 
although we're going to do, we're going to work on this. So you, if you don't want to, no, I mean, it's not necessary right now, but just whatever left over. So good. Mm. I'm ready. Yeah. Looks good, eh? Mm -hmm. I'm still waiting for mine to dry, but I can see it starting to dry. Mm. This one is going to be nice and meditative. This project, yes. Mm. There's something very serene about it. Absolutely. That's why I like, I liked it when I, at first when I looked at it, I thought, no, no, it's just kind of too much work. But then I thought, wait, that, that is so many layers, so many, um, lights and darks and, and the same greens, but they look like different greens, but they're the same. So it has a beautiful depth to it too. Different values. Okay. Good. All right. We have this. Do you want me to stop a bit so you can get to this point? Yeah, a couple minutes would be good. Way I'm sure. Yeah, I'm going to pause. Okay, so now we're going to do the same. We're going to take sap green, put some ultramarine violet in it to make it more earthy, more grayish. I'm going to take yellow, cadmium yellow medium, put it in. But this time, the cadmium yellow medium is a little bit more. So we're going to be highlighting. You know, you can, uh, you can make a really nice green using uh, black and cadmium yellow light. Really? Yep. Look at this. This is, this is, sap, uh, this is ivory green. I'm going to take cadmium yellow light. Put it in. Ivory green or ivory black? I'm sorry, ivory green. Sorry, thank you. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's almost the same color. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lovely color. Mm -hmm. So yes. cadmium yellow light, ivory black, and you get that, you get that beautiful green. Very nice. Okay, let's take a bit of that, put it in here because why not? <laughs> <laughs> All right, more, more yellow, just because I, I want this highlight to show. And I'm going to... Are we using cadmium yellow light or cadmium yellow medium? Cadmium yellow light. You could use cadmium okay. yellow medium, it would it'd be darker. Okay, thanks. Any yellow with black will turn green, with ivory black. I don't know about the others, other blacks. Never tried it with the other black. Probably I did, but I don't remember. Okay, now, again, with the corner of the brush, I'm going to highlight, and you see, look, it's nothing. I'm just dragging my brush around. I don't want any kind of detail in here, because that, if you do detail in here, what's gonna happen is, it's going to interfere with this. It's not going to interfere with this part. It's just going to make this part, which is more detailed, look exactly the same, on the same level. This is far further back. This here, what I'm doing here, is further back. So we don't want to show any kind of detail. It's a hint of green and a hint of highlight in here, but no detail. I'm dipping the corner of my brush with a bit of water. Wipe my brush, and again, go back again. Very gently, gentle, gentle. Keep an eye on your reference. See that your reference will tell you where the highlights are. I'm not saying that we're going to copy exactly what we see, but it's a good guideline. 
Again, I'm turning my, I mean, I was using this part. I don't have paint on it anymore. I'm switching to the other part. Okay. If I find that my color is, you know, if there are spots where I lose, see like this is heavy right now here. It's like a blob in there. That's okay. I'm just gonna leave it now. I'll come back to it in a minute. And I'm gonna continue for now with what I'm doing. Corner of the brush, gently. Don't forget that these, whatever you're putting in there as, turn, as, as far as highlights, it's gonna dry darker. Now, I'm gonna come back to here, behind her. And more, with this, now I'm not leaving too much um, of a gap in between. Now over this, I'm gonna put a bit of detail, maybe not detail actually, it's more like a little dots here and there. If you have the same brush stroke in the background and in the front, then these trees will look on the same level. But if we want to make one of them look like in the back, then I am going to cool it on detail or on brush strokes. So when I put the one in the front that has more brush strokes, I can see it. or more detail, I should say. I'm gonna take a little bit more yellow. And you know, if you, you, you get, you know, you think that you put too much yellow, doesn't matter. You can always glaze it with a darker color or with a tone it down with another color by glazing it. So it doesn't matter. So this, this blob that I have in here, there are two ways of fixing it. I could, I can easily put negative painting, paint dark behind it, or I can just put a highlight, the, tr the leaves in front. This way I can get rid of that little blob. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so we don't want to highlight too much. At least usually I give give myself room for more to adjust the values here once I work on the tree that is on the left because it's a little bit more a little bit closer and um, more detailed and more highlighted. So this way. I don't have to finish everything here. Okay. Perfect. Good. Let it dry. And then we'll work on the left hand side. All right, for the tree on the left, I have sap green and actually I cheated a bit. This is, uh, I, I have leftover hooker's green deep hue permanent. It's a really good. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. So anyway, it's the same. I, I have uh, any green, sap green is fine. Add to it some uh, ultramarine violet like we did before and a little bit of yellow. And I'm mixing them up together. This is a little bit watery, little bit. So, you know, it might, the, the uh, brush flows or kind of moves easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here to the left. And before I do any detail, not yet, I'm going to prepare the background. Let's go a little bit darker. This is too light, although it's going to dry darker. But let's go a little bit darker, just, just to be on the safe side. I don't want to lose the depth. Okay, so with this, I'm going to do a layer of nothing. What I'm doing right now is a layer of different values, no detail. I'm preparing the background for where I'm going to add the detail detailed mm -hmm. um of leaves okay so not not yet no detail yet so what i do when i'm looking at this tree is kind of strip layers of that that tree strip the layer so i look what's behind at the value behind those little kind of leaves that you see. What I see behind those leaves that are, they look like this. The, oh no, don't, 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 geez. The ones that look like this, you know, like the little kind of, the, you see the detail. I look what's behind them first. What's behind them is a medium tone that's not, doesn't have any kind of specific shape. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. And see, I mean, it dries darker, which is fantastic. It's great, that's what we want. I'm gonna leave some of the darks showing. Don't, don't cover it completely. And if you do by mistake, that's okay. Just go over and, and then, um, and then uh, add some darks open up uh, or add the, because dark, it gives you depth. Okay, I'm going to do this. This is good. This is good. This is, all I want is different, different um, values. So I want light, dark, medium tone. I don't want light. I want medium, dark. Because light is going to be the one that's at the end. I'm going to put it at the end. Okay, some part, part of this tree has a more highlighted 
kind of more highlighted leaves, but they're not still not too detailed. So what I'm doing is I'm taking yellow with green and I'm putting a little bit more of the, I'm putting a bit of ultramarine violet in it to tone it down because yellow, because sap green and yellow or sap green is not nature color. Like it's not the, the color of trees that you see out there. It's an artificial color. So when you put, when you tone it down a bit with anything, yellow ochre, uh, any other color, when you desaturate it, it, it looks better. Okay, so now I'm doing, what I'm doing is I'm highlighting this area here. And there's no detail still, just, just values. Now, this is, this is not bad. This is good. This is, I kind of, I can work with this. Now, oh, geez. All right, not too much. I'm still doing the no corner. Still using the corner. Now, I'm going to look at the painting I'm working on, and I see here there's a line of dark in there. It doesn't matter. I'm going to leave it. But what I'm going to do, because I lost some of the darks, I'm going to open it up a bit in certain areas, like here. This is negative painting right now. That's what I'm doing. I'm looking at the shape of the darks that I have in the back. Okay, that's good. Let's take this. Now, I'm going to go to detail. So I'm going to take yellow. I'm going to add with the yellow and green, mix them. And I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine violet or maybe a little bit of black. It doesn't matter, whatever you have. Okay, it doesn't have to be very, very light. Now I can use the corner of my brush again, or I can switch to a round brush. And then I can do this. Oh, geez. Wipe my brush and then just do this. So, when I put these details right now, kind of detail um, leaves, I do have a background that they're sitting on. It's not, it's not like I'm working on a background that is completely dark. So I'm working on a background that's medium tone and I'm highlighting over. See how it, it, it gives this kind of beautiful layering of, of leaves in there, of, of greens. And, and it, this, this brush is not good. Okay, let's open it. Uh, let's do that. Wipe my brush and let's try this one. Oh yeah, that's much better. So now instead of these leaves being on dark, they're on a medium tone and they look pretty good. Yeah. 
You don't have to put too many of them, just a couple. But that brings this part closer to us, this part further back, because there's more detail here. And I can sit and do as many as I want. I can skip some of them. Put this one here. Wipe my brush. And highlight. And you see, even if behind those trees, um, this part, there's another tree, you will see it. You will see the, the, the one in the front just because we're putting more detail. It's highlighted and it's more detail. So it's more highlight. Uh, I, I, think, I think this part needs a bit of white with the green too to bring them, for, bring them in, to, to show it more. Let's put some white. Okay, now let's see. Oh yeah, see, that, that looks good. That's a light green. And I really don't need to put too many of them because I already have a background in there. It's not dark, dark, black. So I'm, I'm okay. I'm just going to put, you know, you could choose to, to put as many as you want. Keep an eye on what you're doing. Sometimes you need to go darker. Sometimes, you know, like in here, you I need to go a little bit darker, left side. It, you don't want the whole thing to look exactly the same. You know, all, all the leaves shouldn't be, shouldn't look exactly the same. Same value.
doesn't have to be exactly the same shape as the one in the reference. The one in the reference is just a guideline. Again, a little bit, oh, geez, okay. So you know when you uh, make your color, when you glaze your color or you make your paint a bit transparent, it dries darker. So, it, because it's it's transparent, so when when it dries, you can see the layer after underneath. This is what I'm doing here. Um, I'm softening this with making my color a bit transparent. Oh, yeah, this is too much. Okay, so now I can see, I can leave it just like that, or I can add more if I want. But definitely, definitely, this tree looks closer. And I, I probably add a little bit more, but we don't have to do it right now. I could do it after. Now, but I can see that here, it's kind of a little bit, maybe it needs to be toned down a bit. Let's take a tiny bit of... Ultramarine violet, mix it with the um, green that I have here. And let's try to see if, just with the corner of my brush, tone it down, or maybe take. So what I'm trying to do is glaze darker color here darker green just to push it back um, it's coming forward too much yeah that's better I don't want to see too many details in here so glazing it is a good idea here glazing all this to push it back Good. So I probably, that's what I would do. I mean, spend some time with the one on the left and kind of add a couple of these brush, brush strokes. Doesn't have to be exactly kind of all too like light light but more more or less a little bit more of the shape of these beautiful just to bring this tree forward so automatically when you look at it it says I'm in front of all of the other trees How did this happen? I don't know. I made a mess. Paint. Okay. That's actually soothing. Mm -hmm.
All right, do I want more? Mm, no. It's off. All right. Good. So you see the one in the back is more hazy, fuzzy. It looks like it's in the back, and this one looks like it's in the front. Yeah, there's more, fo I can see like the focus of it. It looks good. Yeah. Like one of those graphs where you blur the... Yes. The yeah, and it will look, the whole thing will look much better when we start doing the background because the background right now is really dark, like black. But once mm -hmm. we start adding those rocks in the back, in the first part of far away in the, on the other side of the water, it, it just tones down everything in here. Right now, everything looks like color, 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 black. You know what I mean? Like when we start adding the rest in the background, it will look much better. All right. I'm going to, Stop recording. This is end of part one. Next week, we'll continue working on the background.